How you doing folks? Welcome back to, well, the Project Boat series. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, we've had a lot on. I've actually done a little bit of work in the boat uh, since uh, I have done a video, but uh, it's not a great deal. And I'll just run through quickly what we've done before we move on to uh, what I'll be finishing today, hopefully, and uh, what we're gonna do, do moving forward. So, uh, since we last spoke, I've uh, tabbed in um, some uh, thwarth ships or cross supports or uh, gussets, whatever you wanna call them. And um, I've just tabbed them in with a single layer of 450 chop for now. I'm about to glass them in with 450 chop and 450 double bias. And then from there, we're gonna uh, foam fill all these compartments that we've created by putting these um, cross members in. And uh, then we're gonna go and build the fuel tank. And from there, uh, we'll put the floor on. So look, a little bit of progress made since you've last viewed, but uh, not as much as I'd liked. And, and, and you know, life just gets in the way of these things and it's, it, it is hard to keep uh, these videos coming as well as building a boat at the same time, but I'm gonna do my best to stick it out. So, um, here we go. We'll just uh, get stuck into it and uh, start glassing in these cross members. that was one side of 24 to go. Glassing and hand laying is definitely not a fast process, but it is uh, it is rewarding when uh, you see the end results and, and the strength you get out of this sort of product. So I'm gonna keep plucking away here. And uh, once I do all this, we'll move into uh, making some baffles for the fuel tank. So stick around if you wanna see some of that. So that's about 10 hours worth of glassing and it's not a it's not a fast process, let me tell you. Uh, so up next, I'm gonna probably start on the fuel tank. So I'll start making some baffles and uh, the uh, lid for the fuel tank. Still arming and ahhing whether I'm gonna put a stainless steel 32 mil bit of pipe down the center of the keel here so I can drain any water from in front of the fuel tank to the back of the boat into the bilge well. Because the fuel tank is becoming part of the hull, there will not be no other way to get fuel, uh, get water back. So that's still something on the cards that I'm considering uh, maybe not doing and just putting up with having water or having to either pump or uh, sponge water out of the front there. Um, I know that's going to be painful as well, but it's that compromise whether I want a stainless steel tube glassed into my fuel tank or not. So I'm going to think about that one a little bit. And uh, before we go and glass any baffles in or bulkheads through the fuel tank area, I've made that decision and I'll keep you guys updated. So from here, I've got a piece of malamine that I'm going to start laying fiberglass onto with some mold release wax and then that's what we're going to make our baffles out of so rather than using thermalite which is um, a little bit thicker probably only have about five or six mil of fiberglass uh, in the baffles which is still strong enough but it's going to give us uh, it's going to give us a little bit more uh, volume in that tank so more fuel in there calculated the tank to be about 350 liters so it's going to be a fairly big fuel tank for a six meter boat and it's going to put a lot of weight down low um, which is lowering that center of gravity and obviously going to help improve the ride given that the weight's there as well all right crack into this one so guys as mentioned i've got the malamine board and we're going to um, basically lay up some flat sheets of glass uh, to use as uh, baffles and a um, a lid for our fuel tank so um, the layup, I'm probably going to do five layers to start with, see how thick that is. So that'll consist of three layers of 450 chop and two layers of 450 double bias. 
nearly at the end of my roll of double bias and I've actually got to 600 double bias this time. Uh, if any of you were wondering why I hadn't used 600 in the past, it was because I just couldn't get it when I wanted to get it. Um, unfortunately, that's the way it went. So I just had to add more glass to where uh, more layers of it where we needed it really. So I'm gonna cut out um, quite a large surface area here as you can see. It's about 1600 long and 650 wide. And we're gonna lay up on this board after we put some uh, release wax down and see how we get on. So hopefully it pops off in one flat sheet, nice and easy. I've never done this before. So uh, hopefully <laughs> it all works nice and smooth and doesn't stick to our Malamine board. All right, I'll uh, keep laying out our sheets and uh, measuring them out. away from that, um, that whiteboard so hopefully fingers crossed that works for us and then uh, we'll get another layer down and um, and start cutting some baffles out of those all right guys we'll uh, be back in the morning good morning guys and there we have it she's all cured Looks great. The layup looks fantastic. Pretty easy layup this one, just the flat board on sheet after sheet, so that's relatively easy. Got a chisel under there and uh, see if we can pry it up. All right, the moment of truth. Look at that. a little bit flexible for my liking for the application that we're going to use it for so we'll probably throw another two layers on there I reckon um, which possibly actually will have to be three so uh, because we're using the double bias so we'll have to be one more layer of 450 chop one more layer of 450 double bias and then another layer of chop over the top of that because um, as I found before finishing on the double bias um, the stitching the grains in the stitching uh, it doesn't like to be glassed once it's cured um, and it, it, it's really hard to get the air bubbles out of those lines where the stitching is and um, I'll, I'll be able to show you what I mean on a little bit of uh, double bias there when you can see these lines it just seems to hold air pockets when you want to glass over that after it's um, cured off all right here we go Righto guys, 
Well, I'm just about to throw the uh, mold release wax on again for the second layer. This time I'm going to do seven layers because um, the last uh, one I just didn't feel it was quite beefy enough. But on this time, and you'll notice the last time, uh, right before I started in the start of that time lapse, lapse I actually grabbed the mold release wax and just threw a coat over. Now the instructions for using a mold is to actually rub it on, let it dry clear and then polish it off. So it, it's actually like a smooth polished layer rather than uh, a film of wax on there. Now I was worried about it sticking to the board so I just ended up last minute putting a layer of wax over the top of it and putting that film on top and that worked the treat. So rinse and repeat, I'm just gonna do that again. Um, it'll probably pop off that now anyway, but just to be safe, we're gonna do it again. And another little tip um, that you've probably seen me doing as well is that all the offcuts from the big long sheets off the roll that I've been cutting for this layup, all the offcuts I've rolled up and put to one side, obviously we're gonna keep all that. That's a lot of fiberglass that we're not just gonna discard off. And those long rolls that are about 14, 1600 long, uh, are going to come in handy along the bit along the build process. So there's a couple of little ones for you Excuse the rain, not much I can do about that. Jump back in the boat, I'm looking at the fuel tank, so uh, I've given it a good grind out uh, and ready to basically work out what we're gonna do uh, with the fuel tank. So I mentioned before that I was gonna run a tube of uh, stainless steel through the bottom of the tank for a drainage pipe from the front of the boat to the back. Now. I've put the bulkheads in between the stringers to give you an idea of why I'm going to do that and just give you a visual um, display. Uh, and the main purpose of it is to get water from this compartment, which is between the console, main bulkhead, and the front of the fuel tank. So this, is, this bulkhead is the front of the fuel tank and that is the back of the fuel tank. Now there's gonna be a series of baffles in between here and a tank top lid before the fuel goes down. So that's what I'm building at the moment in the shed by laying uh, the glass down on the Malamine. But what I'm trying to work out is, do I want a subfloor in here to be able to drain water back? And I think the answer in the long term is yes, because Getting water in either that compartment or that compartment uh, is annoying and I don't want to have to be sponging it out all the time. And bilge pumps and things like that, they just don't pick up all the water and you want those compartments dry. So the intended use for this is probably going to be a small kill tank slash esky. Um, so I've come up with um, using the via the hull and using this, um, I think this is 150 um, mil timber as a representation. I'm gonna use Thermalite as the subfloor if I do it, but you can see this gap in here, that's about an inch, inch there. And if we take this down the back where it starts to peter out a little bit, the hole starts to peter out, and we put it up against the aft bulkhead, you've still got maybe three quarters of an inch clearance under there. So the idea of that will be to have a strip of Thermalite, the whole length of this tank uh, where the water can drain under. Now we'll obviously sit that in and glass that in place. And I think it just, even if we don't use it, it just gives me peace of mind that we can get water from there back to the bilge well where it can be either drained out the bunghole or pumped out from there. So. I think uh, that's the way I'm gonna go. So moving forward, I'm probably gonna lay a little bit of chop strand mat 
um, inside here um, just to give me something to bite to a little bit better. I have ground down all the um, all the double bias that we sort of had left over on the stringers and then I'm going to um, bed that subfloor and glue it in and away we go from there. Rightio guys, so I've cut the uh, subfloor for the bottom. So what I've done is tacked these um, two end bulkheads of the fuel tank in with some hot glue, just a couple of dabs, just to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna make up a cabasil resin um, putty and I'll cove in the corners and then uh, tap in some chop strand mat around the edges and we'll let that set overnight ready for uh, glassing tomorrow. So I've uh, acetone wiped everything. I have uh, sanded the thermalite board with some 40 mil, uh, 40 grit uh, sandpaper on the orbital just to um, key it up a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. So I'll throw these in real quick and uh, that'll probably do us for today. Well guys, it's uh, nearly five o'clock. I'm gonna call it a day. Be back tomorrow and uh, we'll uh, start working on the subfloor for this fuel tank. Stick around. What I've got here is the false floor we're gonna put in the fuel tank. Now it's an 18 mil sheet of thermalite and I've cut it to suit. So um, what I'm gonna do is prep this board for glassing into the tank. Now because the underside of the board is Probably going to be exposed to water um, quite often because it backs up to the bilge well. Uh, what I'm going to do is laminate one side of this board before we put it down. And I'm just going to do that by putting two layers of 450 chop on there um, just to give it some sort of protection. Even though Thermalite doesn't need um, anything, it is water resistant. Um, but over time it could potentially seep in being a foam. So what I'm going to do is laminate um, this now and then we'll lay three layers of glass into the bottom of the hole where this is going to be bedded in and then tomorrow once this is all dry we'll, we'll bed it in and glass it in. It's the start of another day now and we have laminated our subfloor and we've got our two sheets of glass ready for baffles so the plan today is to just get the subfloor glassed into the boat and uh, then maybe by this afternoon if that's dried off we can start uh, to uh, cut some templates for the baffles and we can cut them out and start making them if uh, it's dry enough to work with. And yesterday I also threw in a couple of knees into the transom as well. Uh, and so that's something else I can throw some glass at today as well while we're going. So plenty to do today. I'll tell you what, this is uh, the fifth day straight I've worked on the boat. And it's a Saturday now and it's a lovely day outside. I'd much rather be fishing, but uh, look, I give credit to those guys that um, do this full time for a job. Um, it's just one of those things. There's, there's not a lot of nice parts to the job, um, particularly when you're getting grinding and, and getting all itchy and that. So um, it does pay to have a lot of patience with this, which I'm not known for, but um, the end result is what I can see in my mind and that's that's all I'm hoping for so anyway get stuck into it today alrighty guys I'm just about to uh, glass this subfloor in couple of key points because we've been using laminating resin up until now with 
no added wax. I've added some wax to a small pot of resin and what I'm gonna do, after I acetone wipe all this, including the floor underneath and the subfloor, I'll acetone wipe it and then lay uh, I'll just one layer of film of, uh, of waxed resin over the top and that's going to help this glass cure correctly or, or fully cure it. So laminating resin doesn't cure unless it's got a waxed coat or something over it that is going to seal it off from the air and then it will cure properly. So that's what I'm going to do there. So wax coat down and then I'm going to bed it in with um, some cabasil and resin. Now I don't have wax in the cabasil and resin because that's going to get covered over later. Uh, and there might be a little bit of residual stuff underneath but that'll still cure, I'm happy with that. So, all right, put a time lapse on and get into it. Excuse my uh, mask um, D10 on my face, but uh, guys, that's probably going to be enough for this episode. Um, there's been a little bit done, so we have achieved um, all our cross members um, for the stringers. They're all glassed in. We've tied the transom in um, to the stringers with a couple of knees there on the main two stringers, which has come up a treat. I'm really happy with that. So that's gonna provide a lot of rigidity to that transom and uh, strength for that, that big yummy 200 swinging off the back. And uh, I'm quite confident that that's gonna be a lot stronger than uh, what these boats were factory. Now, I've also uh, prepped the fuel tank uh, off camera. I haven't worried about taking you guys through that, but what I will take you through in the next episode is making the baffles and how I'm gonna make the profiles for the baffles in there which is the same way that I made the profiles for the cross members. So um, for anyone wondering how we did that, we'll go through that in the next episode. It's not that hard, but um, you know, something that, um, an idea that I sort of found online how to do it. There's a million ways to skin cats guys, but uh, that's how I did it. And I'm uh, happy to show you guys. So on that note, we'll finish up here. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already uh, and follow us on this journey. I know the videos have been coming out slow but boat building is a slow process. It, it, it just takes time, there's, there's no other way around it. Uh, and I do unfortunately uh, work month on month off. So uh, among working away for a month, I have other things in my life that, that need to be done as well. So I'm trying to get there hopefully by the end of 2023 so the end of this year we should have uh, a boat hopefully ready for paint so that's my aim if not already painted so fingers crossed we can get there but uh, that's enough of me blabbering on uh, I'll see you in the next episode guys take it easy out there cheers have a good one